Good evening, everyone. Good afternoon, depending on where you are. Uh, I'm Darren Wright. I will be your host for this session. Tonight's session, we're going to talk about basically ideas, but we're also going to talk about imagination to ideation to realization. So it is a pleasure to have <clears throat> to be with you. And I think one of the things about our topic tonight is just how important it is. Now, <clears throat> why is it important? Well, you figure everything that's been created by man basically originated in someone's mind. First in the imagination, and then possibly into an idea, a concept, a thought, before it became real. That's everything. So <clears throat> when we're looking at it, our ideas are more important and our imagination are more important than we really give credit to. We give most of the credit to the after, the actual product or uh, service provided, but it's really the imagination and ideation that's important. Now, <clears throat> we know as a child, we basically, you know, our imagination just flows because we don't have any boundaries. We haven't put any restrictions, you know, <clears throat> on our thought process. As we get older, we begin to limit our imagination because we begin to think about the uh, with the opposite side of the brain and we think about the logistics regarding or the possibility about an idea or imagination. So we begin to constrict it. So what I want to talk about is, you know, getting back into that space where you allow your imagination to, to flow. You want to basically put it on fire because there is where you will get your ideas. Now, who's this important to? Basically anybody. Now, I normally framed it for entrepreneurs. <clears throat> Being an entrepreneur and realizing just how important my ideas are, I created this program some years ago for entrepreneurs, an entrepreneur development program. And this was just a small segment you know, of that program. But it's actually important to everyone. Uh, you know, if you work for a corporation, Hopefully you're in a position where you want to come up with ideas because as Einstein said, our imagination is a preview of things to come. And that's true. We think of something in our head, in our mind, and then, you know, either we do or somebody else with us will work towards bringing that idea into realization. So that's why they say everything is created twice, once in someone's mind and then the actual product. So I just want to share a few things with you as to, uh, as it relates to your imagination, again, to, you know, to ideation, to realization. We're gonna focus mostly on the imagination ideation because bringing it to realization requires more effort and take more, much more time than a, this brief you know, Facebook talk. So when we think about the word I, you know, uh, idea, well, it comes from a Greek word called idean, which basically means to see. You know? To see what? To see something in the future, something that doesn't exist. And then, you know, uh, we go from there to, you know, again, allowing that idea just to, you know, float in our, you know, in our mind. But the power of the idea comes from that everything begins with a thought. You know, a picture, it's an idea in someone's mind. Uh, and like I said, everything around us, no matter how simple or complex, is a result of someone's idea. Uh, <clears throat> You know, we all have ideas. The difference is we all don't act on them. And that's the key. How many of you at some point in time had an idea and you shoved it in the back of your mind? Ah, you know what? It's not important. Only to see that idea show up someplace else. Now, there's a reason for that, which has to do with something beyond this discussion. But, you know, some of us will realize that our imagination or it's been said, our imagination is actually on another in another dimension. So where do those ideas come from? Well, you know what? Uh, not to get too heavy into quantum you know, physics, but those ideas and those thoughts are just energy that are floating around. And when you're on a certain, you know, let's say on a certain vibratory level, those ideas come to you, which is why two people in different parts of the world could actually end up with the same idea. And that's has happened, you know, uh, previously. But your ideas are valuable to problem solving. So you don't have to be necessarily an entrepreneur or a corporate employee. In your personal life, we're all going to be, uh, we're all going to meet challenges. <clears throat> so 
we want to come up with ideas that will be you know, helpful to us solving our problems. And, you know, if you're an entrepreneur, you know, your business is an idea. It's a thought. It all started from, again, something that may have popped in your head, something that inspired you, so forth, so on. So you don't want to, you know, uh, minimize your ideas. And actually, I always recommend that, you know, to you know, students and clients is that you want to write them down. Because something that's important is people tend to dismiss their ideas because they haven't figured everything out. Now, <clears throat> there's a saying that no idea is born perfect. We get an idea, hmm? you want to then take that idea and it has to go through several iterations. If you're working on a team, naturally the idea gets put out there and then people tend to bounce it back and forth. And there's where you want to look at techniques for brainstorming. <clears throat> you want to put it in a space where people are willing to cultivate that idea. Now, this is important because we all know if you share an idea with certain people, what will they do? They will pretty much say, oh, that won't work. Well, maybe the idea in that format will not work, but it doesn't mean the idea won't work. So that's one of the things that you really want to you know, consider when you get an idea is let it, as they say, let it marinate. Now, uh -uh. So why is your ideas important? Because as I said, you know, everything comes from the idea, comes from a thought. And I'd ask you this question, if you've had ideas mm -hmm, that you haven't acted upon, why didn't you act upon it? Mm -hmm. You know, what was it that held you back from following through on that idea? You know, why? Most people say, well, I didn't have the resources. Well, I didn't know how. Now, if I take you on another level, and this goes back to really understanding the, the whole concept of imagination, when you come up with an idea, I always you know, tell everyone, don't worry about the how. Just mold your idea out. Mm -hmm. Take it as far as you can. Several years ago, <clears throat> I decided to switch my focus in terms of business and even career-wise. And I made a promise to myself that no matter what idea came to me, I was going to allow it to come through me and I was going to you know, build it as far as I could without forcing it. This is almost something like what they call being in the flow. And in that time space, I had so many ideas coming to me in the, you know, in various capacities. At one point, I actually created a, a barbecue sauce, which I always tell people about because it was created at a point in time where I was teaching an entrepreneurial class. <clears throat> and I wanted to show students how quickly you could come up with an idea and move it from, again, imagination, ideation into realization. And literally within a couple hours, I had a barbecue sauce, I had it bottled, and I had a label put on it, and I ended up selling it to uh, family members that evening. Now, here was the thing I always tell people about is that what caught me off guard is that it ha I happened to have a family member who was here from California. I hadn't got to the point of thinking about shipping, but I figured that out later. And I only did that as an exercise to prove how quickly you can move from a thought into an actual product. We have that advantage now more so than years ago. So yes, I, I was in that moment, I was in the flow. I came up with a logo. I printed logo out in color, put it on a label, sucked the label on a bottle. I sealed the bottle. I just happened to have you know, product bottles for another project at the time. So it made that part a little easy. So <clears throat> when you're going into thinking about how do I manifest you know, uh, ideas. Well, one of the things that they talk about is that you want to have what is known as thoroughly conscious ignorance. Now, I know that might sound, you know, psychological, but really what it means is you want to act as if you don't know anything. Because sometimes we're too educated for our own good. Mm -hmm. And we're too educated about a particular topic. And when you're in that space, in that mindset, what it does is it blocks your ability to think of anything new because you already figured, you know, on a uh, subconscious level, uh, I know everything. So you want to tell yourself it's okay not to know. 
And then you really ask yourself, you know, what are you thinking? Mm -hmm. Remember, your ideas begin as thoughts. So one thing is you want to let go of judgment. Because that's the other thing that we tend to do is as soon as we come with an idea, the other side of us, <laughs> the critical side, begins to, you know, blast that idea as, oh, that's not possible. Or oh, I can't do that. And then your brain begins to shut down. So you want to let go of judgment. Remember, you know what? No idea is born perfect. And you don't want to talk yourself out of something before you talk yourself in. Again, the rule here is, you know, you don't worry about the how. Just let your idea flow. Hmm? You want to be curious and observe yourself as your thoughts begin to, you know, to, you know, as you begin to move through the idea and ask yourself questions. Because here's something else about the, you know, the, the brain. When we tell it that we can't do something, or we ask ourselves a question and respond with a definitive negative, our brain shuts down. So learning how to ask questions to yourself will keep your brain open to possibilities. You know, and those possibilities might be a surprise. So you want <clears throat> uh, to be open. So again, I'm just trying to mold my idea. So I want to be open to any and everything. Let me see where this is going to go. And I think you, if you can even get into a playful mode, it's even better. Because again, if you're in a playful mode, then you're more open to the possibilities. And you want to challenge yourself to innovate, which is really another level of ideation. But you want to challenge yourself that, OK, yeah, how do I come up with this? Darren, you know what? I'm thinking to myself, you, know, you want to have those conversations and saying, I got an idea for a business. And now I'm going to just ask myself questions. Now, how would I do X, Y, and Z? Your brain responds. Mm -hmm. The other thing, too, with your ideas, you got to become the same thing if you're an entrepreneur. You have to become OK with failing. Mm -hmm. Now, when it comes to ideas, I don't believe you will fail. It means your idea just needs to be, uh, you know, developed a little bit more. In the process, too, don't take yourself too seriously. And this, again, this is what happens when people feel like I'm supposed to know this, you know, because my degree is in this area. I'm supposed to know this, which is why somebody who comes, you know, alongside you, they don't have that weight. They're just thinking anything's possible. You know, they don't know that maybe you can't do that. And this is where great inventions and innovations come from, that people, and sometimes they just make a mistake. They fail into something new and innovative because they didn't know that, you know, they weren't supposed to follow a particular procedure. And as a result, they come up with something new. You know, when I taught, uh, at a college years ago, one of the things I always, you know, told my students is, you know, you would always get credit, even if you came up with the wrong answer, if your process with coming up with that answer made sense. If you had some methodical way that led you to come up with that answer, then, you know, what? that's a huge step because maybe your method might be what, you know, what we can take forward. The answer, you know, like I said, you know, the answers to questions that always say really aren't as important as the question, because it's the questions that keep our mind open. <clears throat> now, one of the things that people will say is, uh, <clears throat> you know, I'm not, I'm not creative. <clears throat> I don't believe that. I think we are all creative. Some of us just, for whatever reason, we shut the creative part down, and sometimes that happens at, as, as a child. Sometimes it happens as an adult in the workforce when people don't appreciate your creativity. So let's talk about some rules in this process. Well, again, as I mentioned, one rule is no idea is born perfect. You know, no matter how great you think your idea is, it is not perfect. And if you question the, you know, your idea when you first when it first comes to you. Just remember, it's not perfect. You know, it makes me think of uh, 
you know, a quote that, you know, Mike Tyson from Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson said, you know, everybody has a plan until they get hit with that first punch. Well, that's how ideas are. Your idea may seem perfect until you begin to put it into play. And there's certain things that you didn't think about. Again, going back to, you know, my idea of making my barbecue sauce on the fly and just, you know, for everybody to know, I have created, you know, probably close to 150 brands just by allowing ideas to come through me. So with that, that's the next rule is you want to capture everything. When you're thinking about, you know, coming up with an idea, nothing is off the table. Think about, you know, all the possibilities and there's kind of, you know, I'm gonna say there's techniques to this, which won't be able to discuss tonight, but just know you want to capture everything. You won't even think about when are your when are you most creative? Now, years ago, I used to keep a digital recorder with me all the time. Uh, I still I don't do a digital recorder because of you know uh, our phones, but I still like to write things down. So I used to keep a, a pad and pencil next to me. So <clears throat> you want to think about ways that you can capture your ideas as they come to you. Because again, understand the brain, an idea may come in, it may be fleeting, and you can easily forget about it. The other thing too, I believe that you might want to capture the rules of an artist. They say, you know what, be willing to break rules like an artist. Because a true artist, again, will color outside the lines. They will paint, they will sketch, they will do everything based off of what they are experiencing or feeling. Now, they may adhere to certain rules, but I think a lot of artists, you know, they, they just don't. They just let it flow. So you want to think about that. And there's even rules for breaking rules. You know, so one of the things is, you know, understanding, and this is important, I'd probably say for people who work for corporations, uh, but it probably applies to even to entrepreneurs. You want to know the system uh, that created the rules. Because if you know the systems, like I said, if you know the game, you know what rules you can get by with, with breaking them. All you have to do is look at, you know, sports. You know, I think athletes know what rules they can break and get away with. Now, sometimes, you know what, you may create new rules because of something that you've done. Anyone who knows about Kareem Abdul-Jabbar dunking in the NCAA knows that after he did that, they created a new rule that basically prohibited you know, at dunking. And I believe the same thing has happened to Simone Biles, that they, you know what, she broke the rules with new moves, and I believe they then banned some of her uh, moves because they said they were too dangerous for other people to try. But once you understand the system that created the rules, yeah, you can learn how to bend the rules in your favor. Now, you know, here's some rules that might be considered rules that you can break. You hear all the time, you know, uh, work on one thing at a time. When you're in that creative space, creativity does not flow in a linear fashion. So that's why, you know, when I shared, you know, how I approached something a few years ago was I took an idea as far as I could. And sometimes in that process, it's, you know, uh, sprouted new ideas at the same time. So I end up working on, you know, multiple ideas simultaneously. You know, there's a whole, you know, category of people called parallel entrepreneurs. Well, you know, they're working on multiple concepts at the same time. Not everybody can do that. But when you're in that creative mode, I think it's almost a must because otherwise you end up forcing an idea you know, trying to force something to grow that it's just not their time. So you work on an idea and then you take it and maybe you sit it to the side. The other thing too is, you know, you know people say, well, follow what your industry is doing. Now, if, if that's what you did, if you follow what everybody else was doing, there'll be no such thing as disruptive, uh, disruption technology. Yes, see, you want to be a disruptor. Maybe your idea is something that's going to upend the way people do things. 
you know, as a, as a corporate consultant, one of the things I used to, you know, hear often is, well, you know, you ask somebody, why don't you do it this way? And I know you guys all heard this. Well, we've always done it that way. Okay, well, that was a good reason for doing it that way yesterday. And it might be okay to do it that way today, maybe, but it definitely probably not the way you want to do it tomorrow. So again, always look for uh, ways you could disrupt the way things are done. And that's whether on an industry level or even on a team level. People always say, oh, prepare a detailed business plan prior to launching your business, your idea. That's another rule you can break. You know, that's why they started launching what is known as a minimal viable product. You can just take an idea, like I did say with the barbecue sauce. You know, I had no idea of being in that business, but I could have uh, because after I came up with it, I had people come into my, you know, uh, life. I'm going to say people who were already there who had the experience of how to take that barbecue sauce to production. But it wasn't something that I wanted to do. It was for me, it was just an exercise in creativity, ideation, and realization. So, you know, if you got an idea, don't worry about doing a, a business plan prior to launching, unless you're, you're seeking investment uh, from investors. Just get a product out there. And I know most people probably say, I don't want anybody to steal my product. If your product can be stolen that quickly, then it's probably not a really a product that's going to have a you know you're going to have a long period of time without any competitors but it should not stop you from getting the product out there you know and then the other thing i said is you know people say we well, are waiting until you have a complete product before you launch before you go forward with your idea again you know people push back on that including myself this goes back to the mvp having a minimal viable product Get it out there so you can test it. Let your customers take your idea and move it forward. Because again, you're not going to be able to think about everything. And this is you know, just the way we are. As creators of things, we don't think about punching holes in it the same way an outsider, someone external. You know, For any software developers out there, you might understand this we can't really debug our code the way a user would. So you, you want to you know, uh, push your product out there, your idea out there, and let it get bit, beat up. And don't be offended. You know, uh, don't take it personally. Remember, this is the idea. You want someone or people to beat it up so that you can then perfect it. The other rule that you want to break is you got to work in a sequential order. Hmm? When it comes to ideas, B doesn't always follow A. You want to be flexible. I like to say you want to take the jigsaw puzzle approach. You put pieces you know, together as you see them, as they come into your space. Because you know, when you're putting together a jigsaw puzzle, you know, one of the first things you want to do is you want to get the borders. Because those are pretty easy to you know lay out, but then after that, it's almost up in the air. So you want to approach your idea development the same way, you know. Uh, and when that happens, like you might think about something that might be applicable near the end of the idea development, you know, your product. So just jot it down, you know, and then you begin to fill in the blanks, you know, the gaps as you move along. The other rule that you want to break too is, you know, they say you know, uh, you want to wait until you have the entire business infrastructure built. No, you can also build as you go. This is real important when you're <clears throat> uh, grassrooting your your business. You basically you know, build it as you go, as opposed to waiting until everything is in place. Because again, one of the advantages of building it as you go is you can basically experience or you get the feedback on things that don't work before you build everything. Again, going back to 
you know, uh, developing software. <clears throat> I don't remember what the actual numbers are, but you know, to fix a bug after the software is complete is much more, much more expensive than finding that bug early on and correcting it. Mm -hmm. We used to always use a or like a common example that was always used is you know a pilot flying a plane, and most people don't know that most planes are off course the majority of the time, but they're able to correct. But if they didn't make that correction early on, what would happen? Mm -hmm. They'd be way off course at the end, and then the time it requires to and cost to correct that error becomes enormous. So, like I said, build as you go uh, and then fix as you go, tweak. Mm -hmm. They say, you know, some people say, you know, hiding the inner workings of your business. Well, you know, you could break that rule too. I think it's important to, you know, when you put your idea in motion, you want to be transparent with your customers uh, because, again, your customers will give you feedback. And from that feedback, you can then tweak and improve. Don't assume that, get another rule to break, don't assume that where others fail, you will also. The reasons that people may fail, you know, they could vary. Sometimes, you know, the timing. So because your idea may be similar to something that failed earlier, you know, someone may have failed with it earlier, you know, you need to understand why they failed and then you adjust accordingly. You know, <clears throat> they used to say this is one of the drawbacks to first to market. Mm -hmm. Where the, the first company to market, there's a huge advantage, but there's also a huge disadvantage, which is they can easily make, you know, unforeseeable mistakes. Second to market usually will capitalize off of the first to market's mistake. So don't assume because somebody else failed with your idea that you will fail as well. Now, <clears throat> they say, you know, the other rule of break is don't listen to naysayers. You know, they say, <laughs> listen to naysayers after you listen to at least 10 positive conversations about your idea because you need to build up that fortitude. If you know what, you get caught up in a conversation discussion with a naysayer early on, you might become disappointed and then stop moving forward with your idea. Now, if you've been at this for a while, yeah, you'll take the naysayers in stride. That won't, won't stop you. So, <clears throat> so you want to get into the habit of generating a lot of ideas, and there's a bunch of methods to that. Even ideas that you might see. Well, let me just back up. You know, when you decide, I come with an idea for a business, and I think, oh, I want to do this. You also want to come up with, you know, uh, other ideas, even opposing ideas. Like I would take people through the process of, okay, how might a competitor do the same thing you're doing? Mm -hmm. It just gets people to think differently or from a different perspective. So <clears throat> when we talk about ideation, we're really talking about the act of the capacity to form, generate, or entertain ideas using various techniques. And again, there's a whole segment I used to do on the various techniques. So what I'm getting sharing right now is just some high level uh, concepts. If you're working with a team and that team could be just one other person, could be five, yeah, doesn't matter. You want to build enthusiasm because when people are more excited about something, they tend to be more creative. It improves your team collaboration. And also your ideation will improve with a group of diverse perspectives. Also something else that I created, you know, I call it the pursuit of, uh, you know, greatness is basically a mantra for engagement. Mm -hmm. uh, and that engagement basically is to get people to feel comfortable sharing their ideas. And one of the rules is when you're in a 
ideation session, you know, and most people may be familiar with this. Yeah, you're not allowed to shoot down somebody else's idea. That's not a given because you want to keep the flow. You know, basically you want it to, to actually build up. So one of the rules, you know, to that would be someone, you know, put an idea, you might say yes and, you know, meaning I got that and then there's something else we can do. But the minute you start shooting down ideas, it basically stops your flow. So how might you start, you know, uh, or how might you look at an ideation phase where you're trying to come up with, you know, ideas? You want to look at your problems, you know, as opportunities because it triggers a solution-oriented mentality. You know, years ago, uh, I had a consultant that was working with me. I was working as a consultant and, you know, he used to always complain about all the problems at the company we were working for. And I was told him, you know, hey, problems are our bread and butter. We want them to have problems. And if we can solve as many problems of theirs as we can, well, guess what? It improves our value. So even if you're at a, at a company, most people complain about, oh, that's all the problems around here. Well, are you coming up with solutions for those problems? Are you coming up with ideas? Then the response to that might be, well, they won't, you know, like my ideas or nobody ever changes. Well, that's beside the point. You coming up with the ideas and writing them down helps you with your ideation capabilities. That's a skill. So you don't want to diminish that by simply saying, mm -hmm. It doesn't matter. It does matter to you. It helps you to build a solution-oriented mentality. You know, one of the exercises that I would do in my program was, you know, uh, I would get people to go through their day and think about how many problems you point out over the course of your day. You know, we easily will see things, oh, you know, whether it's how you're being served, you're caught in line someplace and they're moving slow, Something, you know, is not right. Somehow we become conditioned to point those things out. So my challenge would be come up with a solution. Now, again, people think, well, it doesn't matter. We're not talking about what other people think. We're talking about developing the skill for you. So what you want to do is always come up with, how would I fix that? And here's another tip. Don't want to think about putting any restrictions on resources because that would immediately limit your ability to think through the problem. It's the same thing that you know, people do when you ask them to think about you know, the thing that they might want to do in life. They immediately think about all the restrictions. Nope, you want to have open mind. Hmm? How would I solve this problem if resources were not an issue? Hmm? Again, it puts you in a different mindset. So when you're, you know, coming up with, uh, you know, different types of ideas, you want to think about, actually, you want to use two types of thinking. One is called divergent thinking, which is really creativity, you know, where you're really focusing on the quantity of ideas that you're pushing out. And then the second type of thinking is convergent thinking. That's the critical thinking part. And there's where you focus is your focus is on the quality. They're two separate processes. You might even have you know uh, two groups of people that you might want to pull in, or two different friends, one who's creative and one who's critical. Critical with the understanding that you want to move the idea forward, not critical with it'll never work. Mm -hmm. You're not going there. You want to push it all the way through. You know? So <clears throat> it's important to come with the two different types of thinking because that will help mold your idea. Hmm? So <clears throat> other thing, if you come up with an idea or you have an idea for a business, that even almost you know, it takes it to another level, which is I always ask you know, people, what problem are you solving? 
with your idea. Mm -hmm. And you want to then think from the entrepreneur to the customer. Because as entrepreneurs, even as creative people, we think our idea is the latest, greatest. But we want to think about, okay, what am I solving? Mm -hmm. And that, again, helps you with uh, the critical thinking part. Mm -hmm. So again, you got two types of thinking. One, you just want to generate ideas. That's the divergent stage. That's all creativity. And the other phase is selecting the ideas. That's your convergent stage. Mm -hmm. So let's say to achieve your desired results, it may require several ideation sessions you know, to generate and refine. Again, no idea is born perfect. So you, know, you get your idea, write them down. Mm -hmm. Write as many down as you want. Uh, it was just you know, have, working with someone last week who had an idea she was holding on for, she said, almost 10 years. And in a brief session, we basically came up with a series of ideas to complement you know, additional products and or services that she could then build upon. And then our homework was now go back and begin thinking through each of these ideas. But in the beginning, it was the ideas just started flowing. And you will find that if you are in the space of people who, I would say, are enthusiastic. Because I, I think the creative process will just come naturally to people who are enthusiastic. You don't want no Debbie Downers around. Mm -hmm. You want to get somebody, again, who will think outside the box, no matter how crazy the idea may be. Because again, you're not discarding any of uh, yep, the ideas. Oh, pardon me here. It's like the, mm -hmm. I don't know. Let's see how well that comes out. The sun has gone down. So give me a second. Why? Yeah. Ah. Uh, let me get some more light here. Pardon me. Yeah, I tend to like natural light. In the natural light, the sun has gone down. So got a little dark here. All right. So again, one of the things, I just want to go through some ideation techniques. As I mentioned, you don't want to get caught up in people shooting down ideas. You know, would be say, oh, that'll never work. Well, I mean, unless it's something outrageous, uh, it, it may not work, but you really don't want to create that environment. So when you come with an idea for a new business or a new product, simply, you know what? Make a commitment that all you're going to do is build upon the ideas. Again, pass, you know, uh, release any judgment. You want to stay focused. Here's one thing, too, that I found people will often get caught up in is they end up having multiple conversations at a time. You want to avoid that. Again, you, you want to have an open mind, but you also want to stay focused because the littlest things will, again, disrupt your flow. So when you're coming up with ideas, you want to, you know, uh, or your brainstorming sessions, keep the conversation focused on idea generation or, again, building upon a particular idea. You want to, you know, push through, you know, as they say, fail fast, fail often. No. <clears throat> you want to yeah, kind of really test your idea as quickly as you can. And if it doesn't work, OK, you go back and you revise it. That's one of the advantages of getting a product or service and putting it out there. Even if you're testing it among, among your family and friends, just test it. And again, learn how to utilize your feedback. You know, some people, you know, you get negative feedback and it crushes them. You want to make sure that you don't take things personally. That's why you also want to be selective about the people that you choose uh, to work with. You want to think, you know, say we get caught up sometimes in being product centric. 
meaning we're only focusing about our product or service, you want to, you know, uh, focus on user or customer centric. You want to constantly think about how will the user interact with my product. And really, when you when you start, you know, if you launch a business, you want to really think about from how will the user get exposed to my product, how will they buy it, uh, you know, how will they use it, to even how will they return it. As I shared earlier, when I was doing my little exercise on barbecue sauce, I hadn't thought about shipping. Now, and shipping, you know, bottles is actually expensive. I actually happen to have the product in the glass bottle at the moment. That means we thought, okay, if I were to go to production, now glass bottles would be too expensive to ship. Would I possibly, you know, have to use plastic? Well, that creates another problem for me because I'm environmentally conscious. I would want to use plastic. So now you see there becomes a, uh, you know, a problem there. Just thinking things through. Uh, so from the customer perspective, would be how would they get my product? Mm -hmm. When you're doing your, uh, you know, your brainstorming, your ideation techniques. Go for quantity. You want to go for as many ideas as possible, and you want to go for the outrageous ones. And doing that, you begin to think that my ideal idea might come from pieces from different ideas. That's why you don't want to discard anything. You want to log it, write it down. You know, most people say, "Oh, that yeah, again." They think some of their ideas are really silly, stupid, dumb, wrong, wrong, wrong. You're talking about coming with ideas. And think about some of the products that are out there today and imagine if people, you know, stopped before they got started. Even when it comes to naming your business, when you come with ideas for your business, what do you normally do? Oh, that's really a stupid name. And I always go, well, who thought about a Google? Now it's just you know, part of our, our language. But you know what? Most people don't even know what, you know, most people don't know what that means. And it doesn't even matter at this point. But it's become part, you know, of everyday language. So when you're thinking of, you know, when you come up with ideas, go for quantity, go for outrageous. Mm. Let's see, I yeah, won't go on to, you know, uh, the details about, you know, convergent and divergent thinking. But here's the other thing, too, you know, when you start, you know, come with your ideas, well, let me just say this. What you want to keep handy is, like I said, a notepad, pencil. I say pencil because you may end up doing a lot of erasing. You want to keep those handy. And I say keep it handy with you all the time. Uh, you know, if you're in the kitchen cooking, keep it nearby. Hmm? Uh, if you're in your car, you want to keep your phone maybe you know, nearby where you can put it into record mode so you can you know, log any thoughts that come to you again. Remember, safe driving. Uh, <clears throat> And one of the other things that I would always ask my students to do is begin to pay attention to where you are more, most creative. I think we all have these uh, particular spots, either in our house or certain things that we're doing where our mind opens up and we're at our most creative, uh, you know, I call it your creative space. With some, it's in the shower, you know, some bathroom, some driving. You know, some, you know, right before you go to bed at night. And there's a reason for that. But you want to find out, when am I most creative? When are ideas just pop in my head? And make sure at that point in time, you've got something to log the idea. You know, like I said, this was a brief discussion on, you know, ideation. Again, it's part of a series of masterclasses that, 
I, you know, uh, would do for entrepreneurs or want to be entrepreneurs. It's also in terms of doing it in this format, it's part of, you know, the I Am Ready uh, series of podcasts. So it's really trying to, what I try to do is try to get the information out to as many people as possible uh, to encourage other people to, you know, move forward. And also, again, to also get feedback. But tonight's, you know, session was really the first done in this format. So I hope you found it useful, helpful. And again, this was just an overview, a high level overview. Uh, again, if anybody has any questions, you can reach me. You know what? Uh, everyone always teases me because I have a thousand email addresses. But for this, you can reach me at dwright, D W R I G H T, at sketchedonanapkin.com. And if you want to know again where the name Sketched on a Napkin came from, again, it popped in my head. One day I was working on something and I actually was joking with somebody and I realized, you know, ideas are, you know, famously known for being sketched on a napkin in some diner somewhere. Uh, <clears throat> so I thought, all right, well, that represents, you know, entrepreneurs. We sketch things out on a napkin, on a post-it, you know, and then we mold it out. So there's where you know, we thought of, you know, sketched on a napkin. But again, thank you for joining me and if you didn't join me you catch the recording any questions or for you know follow-up sessions just reach out to dwrite at sketchedonanapkin.com thank you and have a good evening